come on. Existence, it's the blood, it's it's like how I said and check your body at the door. It's a systems check for me. I enjoy that. Struggling for air, you know, my heart pumping. It's a systems check. It lets me know I'm alive, man. I like that shit. Music. Music is everything. Everything. To me, music is everything. Dance is not everything. Music is everything. Dance is a byproduct of music. When a person tells you, oh yeah, I just love to dance, I love to dance, I love to dance. So you love to do the physical part of dancing. Why? You just don't dance when there's no music. You get it? If anything, I love to dance, oh I love this song, and then you start dancing. It's the connection, what the song means to you, ergo what it does to you physically. You can't change the equation, don't do it. You have to dance from an honest place. Live in the real, not the fake. The fake sucks and everybody can see it. I have to go with Teddy Pentagrass. You can't hide from yourself, because everywhere you go, there you are. It's that simple. Live your life and do, I, you don't live your life and I would've, could've, should. You live your life and I can, I will, I am, I'm doing. You know, so. Be as honest as you can, you know. People are afraid honesty makes them feel lesser than in the eyes of other people. Because if I'm honest, you might not accept my honesty. And now I get judged because of my honesty. Oh, that guy, don't, don't, nah, don't fuck with him because he blah, 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 blah. Really? Okay. That's what I like to tell them. Yeah, your feet tell me everything I need to know. Your feet are a window to your soul. I see it. Body movement, I see it. I can tell. I can tell people who have personal issues. I can tell people who have certain struggles. I can tell if people are practice in the mirror robotically. I can tell if people are totally releasing from an emotional point of view. I can tell if people are there for the love me, love me, love me, love me moment. I can tell when people are there so personal in their situation that they go so deep that they're not even aware that other people are in the room. Let's see. Actually, it happened by accident, so I would say... Uh, let me see, that happened by accident, so... Did Vogue find me, or did I find Vogue? I think I found, I found Vogue by accident. Yeah, I found it by accident. Yep. One thing about Vogue that I noticed is that um, it celebrates the form, the body form. It's very physical, you know? It's, um, I always speak about empowerment because, you know, I was a skinny kid. I was not a confident kid at all, at all, at all. Now, mind you, there is a sickening part of folk, meaning there's a cancerous part of folk that, that, um, it's just part of the culture. I don't pertain to that. I don't acknowledge the um, how do you say it? I don't acknowledge the non-existence, but I don't acknowledge the, uh, what is the word? Basically, the, the bad part of Vogue, 
I have no connection to because that's a choice. But the blessing part of all, I can easily see, which is the empowerment, the being comfortable in your own skin, um, the idea of saying, listen world, I am good enough. What do you think it or not? If I have to build my own home and my own um, persona by myself, without your help, it's fine. You know, but you're not going to ignore me in this room. Oh, I have a hard time with that shit. Because my, you know, I'm still a little fan. My mother had me in lockdown, man, like fucking prison. I couldn't do shit. So I did it on the sneak. Because my mom, she used to work at night and sleep during the day. So. I used to get, I got my first job at midnight working at the theater. And the movie theater closes with maybe last show 11 o'clock. So the movie's about two hours. So it's already midnight. By that time, my mom was working at night. So I just didn't come home. I went to the club. You know, some parties were in dangerous areas, man. I mean, you know. But Manhattan was always considered the neutral territory, you know. It was. So that's one. When coming to Manhattan was good. Going to Long Island, oh my god. Just to get out there when you didn't have a car it was crazy. You'd have to take the train. And then when you took the train, the train stopped running at a certain hour, which meant you had to be in that party until the train started again, which started again around 7 a.m. So what people used to do, you know, we used to take disco naps, man. We used to be in the park, in the park, and just go to sleep. With that loud music, yes, you can sleep with that loud music. Just go there and go to sleep. Find a corner, lay out, sleep. Back in those days, you could leave your bag open, nobody would go in your bag and steal your shit, you know. It's cool. It's very cool. You know. Um, but you know, it always takes a group of people to just fuck shit up and, and you know, do their own new behavior that changes the whole vibe of a place, you know. That's Mecca. That's Mecca. For me, that's the beginning. For me, that's home. That's the one place that nurtured freedom and individuality. Nobody was the same. And that was celebrated. The fact that nobody was the same. Not like now. This one is the exact copy of that, the exact copy of that. Individuality is lost now. Everybody wants to be exactly the same. And that's only because if they were not raised in that scene, the only thing they could have to go by is YouTube. You know, YouTube or, or, or what the other person is doing. Say, okay, that's it, I'll copy, I'll copy that. And it's just a copy. But individual statement, mm -mm. if I moved a certain way, they knew that was me. If you moved a certain way, they knew that was you. But you'd still be speaking the same language, but you speak with your accent, I speak with my accent, but it's the same language. That's what's celebrated. Now, people are too afraid to speak with the accent. They just want to speak the same language. And I'm like, yeah, but this thing was in sterile. This thing was made to live and breathe and move, man. I, I don't get it. But hey, like I keep saying, the journey's not for everybody. Mm. I'm very bad. Mm. Wow. Well, they still hold a love party now. They still do, the original people. But David just recently died. And the people that took over were the people that David nurtured. And they're still doing the parties and the adventure of it, but I'll tell you, the crowd now is more of a yuppie white, um, yuppie white kids with money, you know. And um, they love the whole vibe. Some of the old heads are still there, but the vibe has totally changed, you know. They, they don't know this music, so when they come in, they're like, oh shit, wow, wow. And it's, it's totally different, y'all. Totally different. 
There is no mixing allowed. None. The Vibe of the Loft is basically a music appreciation party. The music, when a producer makes a song, he makes a song with a beginning, a middle, and an end. That is his story that he's telling. David Mancuso believed in that you play the song the way the DJ wanted you to hear the song. So that means you play it from the first note to the last note, and then you getting the story from what the DJ is doing. You don't play the song and then mix another song on top of that because now you just tainted what the person that that song that you were hearing, what they wanted to tell you. Can you imagine playing Shaka Khan? I love you, I live you, right? When you played it from the beginning to the end, you are on an emotional ride of what this woman is saying about. So you get the producer's full story from the beginning to end. But imagine you play Shaka Khan, I love you, I live you, and it doesn't matter what record, and you mix another record into that. Now it's, uh, okay, I'm hearing this other thing. Now that the music they're writing together, now it's just something new. And then you're trying to figure out what kind of rhythm it's giving you, this new thing that's blended. And now the story is gone. The, the original feeling or, or, or intention that this artist wanted to give you is gone because you upset the balance. Now, you'll see, you'll hear DJs, yeah, well, I took two records to make one and I made an older for record. That's fine. But what I'm speaking about is the concept of what the producer put down there. Not what you're doing, what the producer did. You're now taking the producer's work and doing your own thing with it. So it's no longer the producer's work now. Now it's yours because you're making this new thing. You just changed the story of what the producer wanted you to hear. That's not his song that you're playing now. You get that? So that's the reason why the law chose not to play any songs that were mixed. And I understood the concept. In the beginning, I was like, how come they don't mix it? Because I was not aware of that. But now, when you hear a song from the beginning to the end, you go, wow. Okay. I get it. You get it? And that's something that, um, unfortunately, because things are so quick, like, you know, when somebody gives you, like, if I give you 300 tracks, you're like, oh, shit, 300 tracks. In time, you can't possibly listen to 300 tracks. So what do DJs do? They go, middle, okay. A little bit more, okay. A little bit more, okay, okay. They can't really understand the whole thing because time now becomes an issue. So they don't, they don't take the time to listen to the whole track. They just go, bip, 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 bip. And that's a problem. What if the track is, is a really beautiful thing that once you play it, it changes you? You can't do that when you constantly, before you get to the good part, up, another track comes in. Before that gets to the good part, up, another track comes in. And it becomes like, are you just doing this to show me how many songs you have? Because the, emo the emotional ride is interrupted. You know? Doesn't make any sense. When a DJ plays, you have to play with your heart and soul. You are, your tools are an extension of what you want your audience to feel. So your tools are your, your emotion that you're giving to your audience. Ergo, let your emotion generate your emotion. You want to give the audience an experience. You have something to say, how you feel. When you play, you're playing how you feel. And you're sharing that with your audience. You're not just going, the 10, ten, ten seconds of this, oop, no, 10 seconds of that, oop, no. Oh God, like that fucking mashup shit. It's the worst thing for a dancer to even hear that. It's like you are, you are, you are disrespecting my ears. You're, you're 
stabbing my eardrums with a knife. But some DJs feel that's how you DJ, and I'm like, what? I shoot myself for the foot for being in that party. You know, if for instance, you were with me at that party at, on the park. That DJ, he didn't do that. He played the song. And he put you on an emotional ride when he played the song. And just at the moment where the song was going to end, he played something else that enhanced that ride to another emotional journey. That's a man who is emotionally attached to what he does because he can, um, how do you say, he can deliver his information clearly. And it was no mistake. Look, I'm, sta I'm standing there next to the guy, you know, and I'm like, wow. Every track took me on an emotional ride. And I don't do hip hop. Mm -hmm. I don't do it. You know, some of it's very vulgar, some of it makes no sense, some of it is just trash music. But then again, in every genre, there's a lot of trash music, so. Um, but this guy, his selections. Love it and hate it. Hmm? There's certain disco songs that are the bomb and they bring back so many great memories. But then there was a time where the commercial side of disco got really fucked up. And what they did is that they had a formula for disco. A certain sound, then there's the bridge, then there's the break, and then there's the bridge. And, the, and every disco song sounded like that. And then they were making generic disco songs. People who had nothing to do with the scene. Hey, let's give Esther, Esther Phillips a disco song. Hey, let's give somebody who got nothing to do with it a disco song. Just for the commercial part of it. Like anything else, certain things do get bastardized. So, with that, love it, hate it. Pose. Pose. Hmm. Moments in time that allow me to be anybody I want to be. Energetic. Emotional. Breathing. Living. Moving. Um, exploring my powerful side. My confident side. That's my daughter. I'm so proud of that girl. You have no idea. From the time that I met her, to see, and it's emotional for me because the time that I met that young lady, she has an innocence and a very, how do I put it? I've seen her grow from then to now. Not knowing her backstory, not knowing her injuries, not knowing the, um, the struggles that she's had with being in a particular position and something happens to push her back. I didn't know all that, you know? All that I knew is this girl, this honest person that came to class with an open heart. That, that, you see it. You see it, I'm forever grateful, you know? And I, um, when, I meet, when I meet people like that, they're, they're very important to stay in my life because they're very, um, they're a reminder of how the human spirit can be, you know? We're all not perfect vessels, of course we're not. But there's certain things that I, I can identify with that means so much to me. You know, Piney's like that too, you know. Um, who else? Um, my kid Greg, he's like that. He's like, he's my son. My kid Greg is like that, from Austria. You know, I meet people. All, all of all of the, the mothers of the houses that Barbara's like that. Um, uh, Amber Vineyard is like that. Um, um, uh, uh, Georgina Melody is like that. 
all these people who have passion and speak from a place of earnesty, that's all I'm, that's all I don't care about. Because they're, they're physical reminders of the purity of how something can be just that simple without the complication. Purple. Love Anything in the purple family. It's both a strong color and a cool, it's both a hot color and a cool color. Hot in intensity, cool in calmness. Balance. Balance is something that we always try to achieve. At least I try to in my life, knowing that if you do one thing too much, something else will suffer. So you understand that the scale will always slide. It will never be 50-50, ever. And understanding that gives you balance. For me, anyway. Uh, love is something that, that I really... Um, it has to be first. For me, it has to be first. Love is something that um, I've learned to tell people I love them because, you know, why not? You know, I mean, society has these weird, uh, how do I call it? These weird rules that they're just man made rules, man made bullshit rules. Men don't cry, men don't say they love other men, men don't say they do this, men don't say they love other this, they can't be sensitive and all that. That's some bullshit, we're all human. We live, we die, we hurt, we love, we hate, we admire, we, we envy, we, um, we, uh, we struggle, you know, those kind of things. That's what it is to be human. Anytime you suppress anything, and listen, I'm not saying this because I'm against the Vatican. I'm not saying that. But if you, any, any sect that keeps one sex away from another sex because of some idea, then something is always going to happen. Always. Always. It's the nature of human beings. You know, if you, if you deny somebody something, Something will always happen. Always. That's the equation. You can't reinvent the wheel. But what you can do is, is be aware and understand that so that you can know where you are in that. Just that simple. Maybe not for other people. I don't. Any, you cannot have clarity of thought if you're altered. You have people who say, oh man, you know, no, but uh, you know, I had so and so and this and the other. Yo, that really opened up my mind. Understand this, what you put in, you get out. There is no free ride. There are consequences for everything that we do. Everything. Me, I danced way too much and I loved my, my dance. I didn't do the drugs and all of that, but look what's happened to me now. My knees, my knees hurt like fuck whether it's a sign of getting older or abuse or how I push my body, this is the result. I don't allow my result to stop me from doing what I love. So in my head, this comes with the territory. I don't have to like it, but it comes with the territory. So I'll figure something out, whether I move differently or, or maybe move at a slower pace or what have you. It's it's the nature of the beast. So, does that explain that? Okay. Oh, baby, party's life. Oh. <laughs> Can't live without party. The social is everything. It is the nurturing ground for release. And you cannot have growth without a safe environment to grow in. That's what the party means for me. Artistry is something that a person embodies from the head to the toe. 
their creative, their creative moment, the moment you put on clothing and you're concerned with what you wear. Like a friend of mine told me this funny story. He said, you know, we're all born, we are all born naked and the rest of it is all drag. I had to bust out laughing and he's right. We all come into the world one way, but we have the freedom to express what we choose to wear or what we choose to show to the world in our own way. That's amazing. You know, that, that's amazing. So I'm definitely in for that. A good artist is somebody who's not afraid to allow, once again, his emotion to, to speak his mind freely without fear of repercussion or censorship. So if, if let's say today I decide to wear a kilt, I should feel free and comfortable in my skin to wear a kilt. But the energies around me may feel, ooh, that's inappropriate. But why? You know, it's all about perception. So an artist is someone who who has such a conviction to their ideas that it may at times go against the grain. And I, and I, I don't mean in a violent and evil way. Because there are some people that are just sick. That's not considered, that's the social, so, uh, social class. They're, they're not considered artists. I mean, when you're doing something and you're representing how you feel or creating something, or wearing something to show the world how you feel or basically you're doing it for you to feel good you know you're representing a possibility that somebody else never thought about that's an artist you know you're very connected to what you do you're an artist you're connected to what you do but you have to understand that your art is not only in one aspect your art goes through everything that you do through the clothes that you wear to the music that you select, to how you cut your beard. You may cut it differently the next time. You know, ergo, ba 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 ba. I didn't have to do that. I felt that, you know what? That's different. Let me try that. I love it. Other people mentioned they like it, you know. But the thing is, I like it first. And that's an artist. To have the conviction to do what you want to do freely, openly, and you accept that it's you first. And then, if somebody is able to quote unquote, enjoy the ride, that's great. But you don't do it for them, you do it for you. Because you set the balance, they don't. <laughs> there you go. Well, In essence, there's nothing new under the sun. Different perceptions, but there's nothing new under the sun. So I can't say anything about new styles because everything that we do comes from something else. So I think it's just a moment of, of discovery, that's all. You took me by surprise When I turned and looked, I saw that message in your eyes you really can't give classes in New York because classes in New York are basically for the European kids who come into the city because people who live in New York don't take classes. You know, because here's the thing. Club culture is just that. The club is the classroom. Especially when you're doing urban. The club is the classroom. So you have to go there. Unfortunately, um, like I was saying, the only reason why I was teaching is because Brian Green asked me to teach. And I was very like, oh, why the fuck would I teach? I mean, in New York, because I was teaching abroad before, but I never taught in New York, because I'm saying, why teach in New York? Because just go to the club. Why does any, Why would anybody want to learn anything from me? Just go to the club, duh. Because here's how, here's how they're raised. This is the YouTube generation. They're raised with being lazy because their 
goals are what's given to them by television. So that means, in order to be a dancer, the goal is to be on either a television star or dancing behind an artist. That means you made it. Really? You ain't gonna be rich from that shit? Hell no. If anything, if you think you're gonna be famous and that fame is gonna give you money, good luck with that one, you know? So, back in the day, when you dance, you dance for your name, you dance for your pride, you dance for your release, you know? There was no prize, there was no prize money, there was no, no thing. I'm not speaking about those little dance contests that they say, dance contest, hey, $500, no. No, that's dancing for the, uh, some other reason, you know. But when you dance because you need to get that out, your release and your main purpose is totally different than everybody else. Totally different than anybody else. well, when you lay down next to me. So the people who come to the parties, come as you are. That's number one. Leave all that baggage outside. Come as you are to experience. To the DJs, I would say, put yourself last. Because it's not about you. It's about the experience you want to give to them. So it's your audience first. To the club owners, I would say, you have the hardest job. Because dance music, club music, doesn't sell at the bar. Because dancers, or people who dance, don't drink. And it's a business. So, for drinking culture, it's, club music doesn't work. Actually, for drinking culture, club music is background music. Because people are interested in drinking. They're not interested in dancing. They're socializing that way. So there's a certain reason why clubs don't want dancers as a majority of their patrons because they'll make no money at the bar because dancers don't drink like that. We're more concerned about the music, the spiritual release we're having, and the sweating it out. We're not concerned about getting high and not being able to do what we need to do. So that's a dying breed now. The other night, you had an interesting situation because Portugal is a drinking culture. They don't really get the kind of music that you play. So in order for that equation to work, you need to bring dancers in that venue to do what they do. And the subliminal message that the non-dancers get is that it's okay to move. It's okay to move. It's okay to dance, it's okay to jump up and down, it's okay to be free. So what I find here in um, Portugal and a lot of these other countries, people do not give themselves permission to be free. They're incarcerated by their own um, expectation. Free your mind, man. We have a saying, free your mind and the ass will follow. So. Free your mind and that ass so far, baby. There you go. It's about making money. Because if something, if somebody can make money from something, they'll do that. Now, mind you, um, when money got into the game, it destroyed everything. It did. Because originally, when you, when you dance for release, the payment that you get is the euphoric release. You know, you don't get monetary payment. So here's the deal. So let's say a person wants to become a dancer, but they want to become a dancer in urban styles. Back in the early 1970s, you, you could never, ever build a career as an urban dancer at all. It was only ballet, jazz, modern, maybe tap. There were certain genres for that. But urban dance was considered frivolous. Look what the crazy kids are doing. It was considered throwaway. That is no technique in that. They're just jumping around. Really? Hmm. 
So we have the last laugh now. These institutions now want these urban dances. And you know why? It's all about money. Because most of the work that's out there is commercial. So let's say you're a dancer. Unless you're hooked up with a ballet company that you can tour and make money and have a, and have a, um, a medical plan, that's rare. All these dancers, they're not dancing with these major companies and so on, because those companies are selective. So the only work for them that's, that's out there is commercial work. And what's commercial work? Always speaking to the youth. So now, as far as commercial people, they don't know about underground shit. They just want to know, hey, what's new? What's new? What's the latest trend? Because for them, it's making money. So let's say they get Rihanna, right? Rihanna has no idea about anything. And they, they say, okay, yeah, let's, let, let's have Rihanna sing a Vogue track. They have no idea what that shit is. So they do something that kind of makes it look sound like without going deep into it because number one, they're too lazy to find out their resources and number two, time is money. They want to churn it out to start the new trend. I mean, look, Madonna, they thought every, the people on this earth, the thing Madonna created Vogue. She was told about it years before. I know this because my friend was the one who told her. She was told about it. You know, and later on he ended up working on her tour and touring with her, you know. She never said she invented it, she never did. But this is people's perceptions, you know. So that's why it's, clarity needs to be something that I think every performer, historian, or dancer needs to have. So, what do you do with that? We can find ourselves a brighter day. Have no idea. I don't I don't I don't like to plan because you know um, I've lived my life so much in fear in the why that the why not is actually very exciting for me. I have a lot of faith and trust in in fate. I've learned to have a lot of trust in faith, you know. Planning everything and trying to calculate everything, life is not like that, it doesn't work like that. Because when you shoot your load and shit doesn't happen, then what are you gonna do? It's better to have a direction and know that wherever you go in that direction, it's okay, good or the bad, it's okay. That takes a lot of growing to do. Also to me is a social dance that, that I grew up with that, were, that it represents a certain amount of acceptance because the truth of the matter is, is that back in those days people were kind of shady, they only danced with the people that they knew. It wasn't really like an open environment even though it was a social dance that everybody knew. But as dancers, dancers kind of pride, you know they're young, they pride themselves on their talent. So if a new person works and walks in the room and they see the new person, you know, if the person is attractive or if the person's got a physicality attraction, they'll just go to that person. But if the person's just an average Joe, they don't see them because, to be quite honest, they're only concerned with the dancer that makes them look good or, or, or they look good. That's what happened to me. But I had a dance partner that taught me and um, Roma, she taught me everything I know. And then after that, I became the it boy. So that means when I rolled in the room, people wanted to dance with me. I'm like, wow. But being on the outside, looking at that, it was very clear that certain things in certain arenas were very clicky. You know, you have clicks, you know. Once I understood that, it was okay. I didn't take total offense because it's kind of like the story of the ugly duck, you know? You know, the duck that grew up ugly, the duck that was born ugly grew up to be a beautiful swan, you know? 
it's, it's the same story. So, but I, but I understand the motivations behind that now. But growing up, you don't, because you're affected by it, you know. And I think that's also why I loved the underground club because the underground club was free. It didn't cause any judgment or anything of that sort. In the hustle scene, it was a little different. It wasn't that free, but but the gay kids were a lot better than the straight kids. Because straight kids, they were concerned about their, you know, what they're doing. But the gay kids, they were just wanting to have fun. They just wanted to have fun. So the gay clubs were the ones, just the way it was. Until today, some of those cats are still hanging out with us. Uh, I mean, some of them are dead because of, you know, viruses and shit, but until today. Absolutely, absolutely. When people move physically, there is something that happens in their body that changes them forever. Especially when they find something out about themselves that they didn't know before. Dance is therapy. Every time I teach, or, or every time I share my life with people, it's therapeutic. It's therapeutic for me, it's therapeutic for them. Some of them may not even know shit, but I tell you, I can look in that room and see exactly where everybody is in their journey. Easy. You know. First of all, they have their own struggle. Look at it this way. If this one doesn't like me because of my sexuality, if I can't get a job because people beat me up and this, that, and the other, it's kind of like a comic. Most comics are torn people because their lives are so bad, they gotta make fun of it, you know? Gay people are in a situation, at least this is objective anyway, gay people are in a situation where things are getting better now than before, but they know how to have fun because, I mean, if your life is bad, you gotta find a window. I mean, if your life is uncomfortable, you gotta find something that makes you happy. If for you to get about a bunch of friends and, you know, curse each other out and call, oh girl, you did this and oh bitch, you did that and, and you know, and this, that, and the other and y'all can laugh about it, that's fun. The music industry, most of it is run by gay people. And the music that they put out is music that connects two people. When you realize that, you go, wow. So here's another vehicle upon which I'm expressing a kind of a joy through music. Because back in the day, the crazy white boys, the, the um, rock and rollers, hated disco because they called disco gay music. Because disco was always happy and, and all of that. And it was no big secret that a lot of the producers that made disco were gay. But here's the thing, when you label music with a, a gender or lifestyle, that's when you fuck them. Your ears can't determine that. You can't. If you hear a tune and you're tapping your foot and you wanna move, oh shit, I can't do that because that's gay. What? That's some bullshit. It's like I'm listening to opera or Chinese music and going, oh shit, I can't do that because of World War I. You know, Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. Are you kidding me? Human beings are more than that. They are. And it just so happens, I hate to say it, the gay parties were the best parties because the cats were free. They were free, they were running around free, they laughed at themselves and this and the other. The straight parties, that doesn't happen at all. Everybody's there front. It's true. When you have a mixed crowd, then indirectly, now check the one I'm about to say, because this happened, and not in this particular situation, but at the party that we went to. Indirectly, when people who are free give people permission to be free, without judgment, gay people struggle all their lives, so when they get up and they start moving and carrying on, they're just letting the inner queen out. They don't care. 
They don't care because they need to get that person out. What that does, it allows other people to look at them. They can either make fun of them or this, that, or the other. But the gay people aren't concerned about that. They just want to do their shit. And that's why a lot of people go to the gay parties. Because they're the shit. They know what's going on. Once again, if you hang out with 10 people and you all go to the same party, you're going to do something with your feet. I might like to say, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm influenced by that. This other cat may do something with the shoulder. I'm influenced by that. But sooner or later, you're going to see something that's a little recognizable among the people in the room, a kind of, kind of either attitude or way of moving. That was the thing that identified the loft. But it wasn't called lofting. If we would say, if you were getting down, we'd say, yo, yo, how? Loft it out, baby. Loft it out. That's what we would say. We wouldn't say, hey, you're lofting. We never said that. This thing they call the dolphin. That's not a dolphin. It's either, we call it, you dive, like dive, 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 or hit the deck. That's what we call it. Hit the deck. And we would slap the floor in and do that. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's lost in translation. But I get it. Kids, they just want to be so excited about the thing that they're learning. Some take it as an opportunity to make money. as to say, well, let me do something that nobody else is doing without doing their research. But sooner or later, one of the cats shows up in the room. And then the motherfucker looks stupid. Don't ever put yourself in that position. You know, don't, why would you do that? Sooner or later, one cat is gonna show up in the room that's gonna tell you something that, yo, oh, I didn't see you there. It happens. All you can do is tell your story the way that it arrived to you. That's it. Don't go further than that. That's how you get in trouble. That's how you get checked. But everybody wants to do the other shit. And yeah, I want to be known for this. I want to be known. I'm honored that people see me as famous and shit like that. But I don't see myself as famous. I'm like everybody else. I'm a simple guy that loves music. Simple. Oh, aren't you the white girl? Aren't you the girl? No, those are just two things that I do. You know, I'm a dancer first. If there's a party, trust me, I will shake that ass. Trust me. You saw it, and I was dead tired. Trust me, if I'm dead tired and the right music is playing. For instance, jo uh, Joanna, she came to a, a garage party. Right? Now, it was people of my era and older that went to the garage. So, they kind of like, you know, life kind of abuses people. So, a lot of them were fat wheelchairs and, and canes and can barely walk. So well, when that music played, it was amazing. She witnessed it. People that were, were hurt started to get up. They started to move. People that had can't put through the cane away and just danced. Just danced. It's like it's like a euphoric high that just took away all the pain and people just started moving to see that, to know how music is directly connected to a person's memory, to a person's um, um, spirit and soul. That's the culture. Not dancing from the outside as like it's an aerobics exercise. It can be nice to look at, but when you're talking culture, that's not culture. And unfortunately, people are comfortable with dancing from the outside in. Whenever we do culture, whenever we dance urban, you're dancing from the inside out. <laughs>